Okay, so uh, kind of summarizing some of the things I said. Um, again, R3 will map onto some sub sub space, subspace of R3. Anything you get by multiplying this matrix by something in R3 is going to be a linear combination of the columns of this matrix. And these columns could all be linearly independent, or two of them could be linearly independent, with the third one dependent on the other two. Um, or they could all be multiples of each other, which means uh, they're all linearly dependent on each other. So you could have one, two, or three linearly independent columns in this matrix. That's a very important idea. Okay? Now, if you have just one linearly independent column, if all the columns are linearly dependent on the others, then what you get if you take all possible points at R3 and multiply this matrix by them is just going to be a line through the origin over here. So this subspace of R3 is just going to be a line through the origin. If you have two linearly independent vectors, but not three, so if one of the vectors is linearly dependent on the other two, um, then you have it, you're going to get a two-dimensional subspace over here, and it's going to be a plane through the origin. Now, we haven't proven that, but you're familiar with the idea of a plane through the origin, and that it is a subspace and so forth. Uh, and that if all three vectors are linearly independent, then uh, When you map all the points from here, you're going to get all the points in R3 here. If you map every point in R3, you will get every point in R3. So that uh, the whole three-dimensional space won't collapse onto a line. It won't collapse into a plane. It just gives you all of R3. Okay, there's more to the way this works, but we haven't started yet really studying linear transformations. But I wanted to give you this idea and the idea <coughs> that... What you get when you do this is linear combinations of the columns. Okay, uh, so but that, that extends this a little further again. Okay, I just list if the columns are linearly independent, then the subspace. When I say it's all of R three, I'm talking about the subspace. Subspace is all of R three. Two columns linearly independent but not three, then it's a plane through the origin. Each column multiple of the others. Everything is linearly dependent on everything else. It's a straight line through the origin. And of course, if you've got the zero matrix, everything maps onto the origin. Um, now, dimension. That is something we should be aware of, but let's be sure. Okay? Uh, what's dimension of a space or a subspace? It's the maximum possible number of linearly independent vectors. Now, that's not the definition of dimension, but that's one aspect of dimension. It's one way to characterize dimension. So, um, if your columns have only two, if there are only two linearly independent columns here, you get a two-dimensional plane because you can have at most two linearly independent vectors in any plane. Okay, if you have three vectors, then uh, if two of them are linearly independent, whatever the third one is, you can take a multiple of this one and add to a multiple of this one and get that third one if it's in the same plane. Um, okay. Uh, now, again, that's not the definition of dimension. The de definition of dimension uh, is in terms of a basis. And a basis is a set of linearly independent vectors that spans. So officially, dimension is the number of linearly independent vectors in a basis. And it's pretty easy to prove that if one basis has three linearly independent vectors, then any basis has to have three linearly independent vectors. And that's because 
if you have three linearly independent vectors in your basis, you're going to need three linearly independent vectors to span that space, even if it's not the same three. Um, now that's just a hand-waving explanation. You've got to write it out, but uh, uh, it, it's pretty easy to write out. Your textbook has written it out. Um, and if time permits, I'll write it out. Okay. Uh, okay, well, what does a linear combination mean? I'm sorry, what does uh, linear independence mean? Uh, and it wasn't real clear that that's what this is, so put a line right here. Okay, linear independence means that no vector is a linear combination of the others. What I'm saying here should be review, but you know, we take that with a grain of salt because people don't always do what they're supposed to do, and they would die when I was a student. But that's no excuse. You need to do it. <coughs> okay. You know, I didn't do as well as I could. Um, and neither will you if you don't do what you should. Okay, so let's put it that way. Okay. Um, so, again, linear independence means no vector, a set of vectors is linearly independent if no vector in the set is a linear combination of the others. Well, that's the intuitive definition. That's what people wanted to tell me. And that's a, a good characterization. But the strict mathematical characterization that translates directly into matrix equations and matrices that you can reduce and invert and all kinds of stuff is this. Uh, and it's totally equivalent. No vectors are linear combination of the others. Um, says if your vectors are V1, V2, up through Vn, it's a bad looking N, but there's a bad place on the board, I think. That this is a linear combination, and we, un we understand linear combination is just a sum of multiples. So this is just a sum of multiples of the n vectors in your proposed linearly independent set. Okay? If the set is linearly independent, then the only way a linear combination can add up to zero is if all the coefficients are zero. Okay? That's it. There's no way to get these vectors to add up to zero other than the trivial way, which is to multiply them all by zero, which is just to always give you zero. Okay? So that's the meaning of basis and linear independence, and that makes more sense out of what we mean by the dimensions of these subspaces and so forth. 